Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the topic of uh, Path Class 5 training series. Uh, this topic is regarding the multipath reflections. This topic should be a bit longer because uh, uh, there are two ways to calculate multipath reflections in Path Class 5 and there are some optional things as well so I have uh, tried to cover everything under multipath reflections in the same video so that uh, anyone who wants to learn the multipath reflections part of uh, path plus 5 he can know everything in a, in a single video otherwise this video may have been uh, distributed in 2-3 parts which uh, I think is should not be good so I have made uh, a complete video and I, uh, I will try to explain everything which Path Plus 5 can do for you for multipath reflections. And as this topic of multipath is a bit uh, more technical, it is not a very simple topic. So there may be some things which uh, should need a bit more technical explanation. However, in this uh, video I will not go deep. I will just uh, go through the technical things uh, briefly. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, very soon I will make uh, more videos uh, on basic transmission planning, basic uh, transmission planning and uh, microwave planning basically. So, on, on, in those videos, I will explain the technical things uh, in much more detail that uh, for example what is multipath reflections and uh, what are the details behind uh, some of the things that we will briefly go through right now so let's start uh, in class 5 if you are in uh, the design window, uh, the window which comes from operations and then you can have a terrain or transmission analysis kind of things. So in this window also you can see that under the design you have these different options of transmission analysis, terrain data, antenna heights and then this is multipath which we will be discussing right now. There is diffraction reports and notes as well, but we will uh, check them in different uh, in other videos, not uh, right now. So, if we want to see the multipath of our link, so this you can see this is the terrain of our link. So, as we click the multipath reflections, <coughs> we have. Uh, now you can see here we are in multipath reflections now. So if you want to check the multipath, the first thing is we have to define a plane. Like we have to tell path loss that we want to check this multipath between what area. Generally, we want to check the multipath for a whole link. But because of any reason, we can even check the multipath on the part of the link as well. However, here we will define the whole link as a plane. So to define the plane, the way is very simple. I mean, you first uh, put your cursor anywhere on the left from the near end, and then you click first the left mouse button and then the right mouse button. So when you will click both, then you will find there is there should be one arrow which will be pointing downwards here. Then you go on the other side, far end side, and you do the same again. Right click and then left click. Sorry, left click and then the right click. First you do a left click and then you do a right click. So you will again find another downward pointing arrow here and this defined reflective plane window will appear and path loss will tell you this is the arrow that I was talking about this is a downward pointing arrow it comes when you first click 
left and then click on the right so this is you can say this is the main reflection point of your your link this is almost the center point of the link so after defining the plane because this is the center point of the plane the reflection point but uh, basically there are a lot of reflection points everywhere because of rays coming from this side or rays coming from this side all this plane has a lot of reflective points so we have to mark all the reflection points so that path loss will calculate what are the uh, what are the significant reflection points on this train so then we go in method and we will ask path loss to mark reflection points so as soon as we did this path loss has marked all the reflection points where the, if a ray is coming from this side and it reaches this point and this may go towards our second antenna so now the multipath reflection points are marked now we have to check if the main ray and the line and the first fractional zone are clear or not so we will go in operation and now we will check the fractional zone so when we click on the fractional zone we will see that this is our main path this is very very clear and we can see the first fractional zone is also clear so our main path and first fractional zone have no problem so we can go ahead now we will start and doing our main multi path reflections which which is our our main topic as well so as i was telling you in the start that there are two ways first way is called constant gradient ray trace constant gradient ray trace is basically more related towards the terrain and the variable gradient ray trace is more towards the surface to towards the air if there is any ducting or any other multi path thing in the air so we will see both of them one by one so as i told you that we will not go in detail of what are these two options what are the main technical differences we will cover them in sala in our next uh, uh, in any later training that i will sala do on the transmission planning so first we will click on the constant gradient ray trace and this constant gradient ray trace window will open the, the main thing that uh, are significant are the side two antenna height and <coughs> start antenna height and end antenna height generally for any link you have to do the multi path from both sides so if we go back i can show you there is option of reverse profile here you can do a reverse profile so the profile will be reversed and you can do a multi path reflection calculation from the other side as well so generally we have to do it from both sides so side one we will, will remain uh, you can say constant the antenna side height is constant for side two it will check from 5 meter to 70 meter that where where in the incident waves can hit on which of these heights and if you see there is a down tilt option as well which is i have right now i have left blank but we can if there is any engine down tilt in the plan then we have to put that value as well so when we click check mark path loss will calculate the reflections and the main incident of the microwave so as we can see the main our main ray is going towards the other antenna as well the antenna is clearly getting a lot of rays but uh, none of the reflected wave is going towards the uh, antenna so it means that we are we will not have any multipath in the network inshallah
the network will be free of a free of multipath reflection so by our first method uh, there is no multipath so let us let us check the uh, other method now so we will again go to method and variable gradient ray trace now when we click variable gradient now we can see that okay we have the antenna height and uh, here also you can see we have a down tilt but i will show you that what happens when we put a down tilt value here so when we will click this check mark now so we can see that now there is it is not checking anything from the ground it's checking from the air only and there is no multipath reflections so it means that our link is free of any multipath reflection from both of the methods method for variable and method for the fixed gradient ray trace for both methods we are fine we have no problem inshallah so let me show you what happens if we add some down tilt because uh, just like if assume that we forget the down tilt somehow and uh, we did not put any down tilt then we can see here the ray the microwave which is coming from here it's being accepted here our this antenna is fully in light of uh, the incident waves the waves which are coming from this near end they are on the far end as well so let's add a 0.1 degree of uh, down tilt on uh, the near end side so i have put 0.1 here and then when we click okay now you can see that only by putting a 0.1 degree down tilt now this incident wave is nearly hitting the antenna the antenna is almost missing most of the waves so it means that if we forget to put a down tilt value a correct down tilt value then maybe the actual link may not be working as we may be thinking for example just assume that there was a down tilt of 0.015 degree because 0.015 degree will surely remove move away move away further from the antenna so for example if we miss, miss the down tilt and we from our side we calculate everything and we find everything is fine but when this link will actually be implemented we will have a lot of problems so that is why whenever we have anything in the planned sheets then this thing should be very well reflected everywhere generally what i have seen is that any this kind of mistake that for example you plan the tilt but you forget to put the tilt in the in the tool it can give you very big surprises when the link is actually implemented so like right now like we can see that if we just miss a value of down tilt then the result may be very very different so i hope you should have uh, get some good idea from this video i hope you should have liked this video please feel free to comment to connect to contact you can contact me on my email address or to linkedin or please subscribe to my channel so that whenever i put any new video you are informed about the video and you can see it so i will be waiting for your comments and your uh, please uh, watch like and share so hopefully see you again in uh, some new video on some new topic inshallah assalamu alaikum